All right, in this video, what we're going to do is start a new, brand new series. <clears throat> this series is going to be called Doom, or Distributions on Old Metal. In the first edition here, we are going to take a look at Debian 13, uh, especially since it just came out. Uh, the goal of this playlist is to show you that you don't have to use a specialized version of Linux in order to get it to run well on older uh, computers. You can use pretty much any standard version. <clears throat> the operating at system itself is not what's, what's not what bogs things down. It's the desktop environment or DE that does that. Some of them are lighter weight, some of them are heavier weight. Some of the heavier ones are like GNOME or KDE that require a lot of, of redrawing of, of objects in the desktop. Uh, some of the lighter weight ones are like LXQt, um, Mate, and that sort of thing. Uh, XFCE is supposedly another one that is fairly lightweight. However, so what we're going to do here is we're just going to get started on the install. We're using Debian 13 first because, like I said, it just came out. Uh, but also at the same time, th this uh, net installer version of Debian um, has uh, a screen in it that you can choose from several different uh, desktop environments. So we're going to go ahead and, and use that for now. Uh, obviously, we are not going to just uh, pick on Debian. We are going to look at uh, Linux Mint, maybe uh, Lubuntu, which is the uh, a lighter weight version of Ubuntu, and uh, a few other distributions. The purpose of this is to show you that you can use modern Linux on older uh, machines. Our test subject for the, the series is a Dell Optiplex 9020. This uh, computer was purchased in November of 2014, so this is an 11-year-old machine. It has 8 gigs of RAM, and without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Again, this is on bare metal. This is not a virtual machine. This is bare metal, so I'm showing you how to put distributions on older machines by using an older machine. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, there will be plenty of pausing through this because as an older machine, it is going to take a little longer to, to uh, uh, install and things like that. So we'll have some pauses along the way. I'll let you know when. Uh, typical, we're just going to go ahead and choose our language and our location. English. We're going to go ahead and let this run. <clears throat> now, uh, for full transparency, I am using uh, a testing version of Debian here. I've just been too lazy to actually rewrite my uh, thumb drive. So this is actually Debian 13 testing RC3 that we're using, which was the final uh, release candidate before it went uh, stable. So we're just going to leave everything alone as it is. Uh, we want this to behave normally, so we'll just go ahead and skip through password. And let me go ahead and get my my credentials in here real quick. Okay, I'm in the central time zone. As you can tell, it's actually installing fairly quickly. I'm not speeding this up. Okay, we are going to use uh, uh, the manual partition. You can use the entire disk. Uh, however, if you do that, it's going to calculate your your uh, uh, swap space based on your RAM, and it could end up using a whole bunch more than you really want to. Um, but you can, if you want, just go ahead and use the entire disk and, and let it run. If you have a decent sized hard drive, this is actually a relatively small mechanical drive. So we're going to go ahead and choose manual, and I will walk through this. I already have Debian installed on this. We're just going to reinstall it. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and uh, get rid of these. I'm going to get rid of all this stuff here so I can, uh, I'll just set it right back up the way it was to show you how we're doing this. Okay, so for this 320 gig, this, again, this is a mechanical drive. Uh, it's a two and a half inch uh, mechanical drive. It's not an SSD. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead and create a partition. I want this to be one gig in size. This is going to be for our uh, EFI. I do have EFI turned on, but Secure Boot turned off. You can turn Secure Boot on um, if the distribution that you're using supports it. Anything that has to do with Debian, Ubuntu, Fedora, the very the major major uh, players in the field, uh, they can handle. Uh, 
uh, secure boot before you decide to use any distribution you might want to check that out that way you're you're not left with an unbootable computer I'm just gonna put four gigs of swap in here which is 50% of my RAM this is gonna be a swap space done with that partition and then the rest of the disk we're just gonna set up and we're gonna mount that on our root and they should reformat it done setting up that partition right yes I'm sure and I'm gonna let this go All right, I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video right here so we can go ahead and let this finish doing its thing and I will be back with you for the next step okay so here we're just wanting to choose which country we get our mirror from we're just gonna to default to the regular standard ones uh, don't need the proxy and we'll go ahead and let this get started it should be done in just a second. It's just reading a couple text files. Looks like it's got some more to unpack and install. I'll be right back with you. Okay, this is going to be the next thing you come across. This here is essentially uh, telemetry, to be honest with you. It's just telemetry. It just wants to have some anonymous information. Um, it wants to know what your hardware is, the version of De Debian that you're using, that kind of thing. It defaults to no. You can choose yes if you so choose to uh, participate. <clears throat> and as that third paragraph down says, you can run dpackage reconfigure to change your mind. We're going to choose no here. And we will go ahead and pause again. Okay, on the screen right here is what I was talking about. We can choose several different distributions, or I'm sorry, several different uh, uh yeah, just top environments. Can't talk today. Uh, so what we're going to do here is uh, we're not going to use GNOME. GNOME is really heavy. We're going to go ahead and scroll down here to uh, let's choose uh, let's choose Mate. I'm going to do that for now. Uh, the lightweight ones you really want to look for, um, and a lot of the uh, MX Linuxes, and all of, all of the uh, the puppies, and all all of the those that are specifically catered to the really low usage minimal kind of uh, distributions they all stick to lx uh, Qt, lxde mate that kind of thing some of them might go with xfce but we're just going to do mate on here go ahead and tab continue and we are going to go ahead and pause this again while it installs this 1177 packages okay that took a lot of minutes uh just for transparency that took about 15 or 20 minutes for that to install uh, so you should be prepared for the same thing, especially if you're installing Debian. Uh, Debian is known to be a little slow on the installation. But let's go ahead and move forward here. We're just going to hit enter to go ahead and reboot. Let it clean up. Uh, if you like these videos, like to see more, make sure you click that like and subscribe button. Uh, ring that notification bell so you are uh, notified when these, these new Doom videos come out. <clears throat> Anyway, again, this is on a Dell Optiplex uh, 9020. It was purchased in November of 2014. And this is the brand new Debian. Just came out. Today is August 12th. This came out on August 9th, so four days ago. Three days ago, sorry. Bad math. I'm going to show you uh, what this first boot does as far as how long it takes to boot up. These are not going to be speed demons, but that's what old metal is, is it's not brand new. But still very usable. Come on. There we go. All right. So we're just going to go ahead and put our username in, our password, and see how long this takes to get us to our desktop. For the first time at that. All right. I was faster than Windows. All right, so in here, system preferences, hardware, administration, control center. Okay, so in here, we can go ahead and mess with our displays. Go ahead and set everything up. As you can tell, it says VGA on it. It does not say virtual. It doesn't, it's in, it, this is not a virtual machine. All right, power management, 
turn this off for now. Appearances. Uh, this is uh, Mate is actually um, GTK based, so you can install GTK themes on here if you want. This video is not about theming; it's actually to, to show you how this installs and to show you uh, responsiveness and that kind of thing. Um, we are going to pick a different background though, because reasons. Okay, so in here you have your applications. Uh, what we're looking for. Power statistics system monitor. Okay, in here, so on this, we are actually using 713 megs of RAM at an idle. Out of the eight gigs, we're not touching our swap space yet. As you can tell, that our lines are very, very small. This is, is not fast, or I'm sorry, it's not using up a lot of resources whatsoever as far as memory and CPU goes. It is using the uh, network a little bit. That might be trying to run updates in the background. Uh, let's do don't want any of that. Let's do in here. No, it just has your mate. Um system I think is what we're looking for. Yeah, okay. So we're using the brand new kernel, we've got eight gigs of RAM. This is using a fourth generation i5. Uh, it's using an old 4600 HD graphics uh, kind of thing. This is actually four core, but it is single threaded. So it's four cores, four threads. Let me show you what processes are running, uh, the latest uh, load averages, that kind of thing. Uh, this is going to be pretty snappy compared to uh, Windows 11 for sure. On this, If you were trying to use the same uh, hardware and that kind of thing. Let's uh, see how much disk space we're actually using here. Let's see if I can get, yeah, I wanna crank this up a little bit so the people in the back row can see. There we go. All right, so EF-H. Okay, so on here it looks like we are using in a total of 4.3 gigabytes of hard drive space, which is only 2% of this little tiny 300 gig drive. So you can tell you have plenty of room to grow that is easily 200% smaller than Windows 11. And it has everything that you would really need in it, uh, internet, Firefox, of course, this is the first time Firefox starts, so it is going to take a few seconds longer than normal. Let's move this over here so we can see it after Firefox starts up. There we go. So let's go ahead and get this completely started up. It will close it and open it up again so you can see what its normal opening speed is. Browsing. All right, so if we go ahead and close that, let's open it back up, and you'll see that it opens a lot faster now. After that first initial, there you go, and you'll see that on applications on on slower machines, where the very first time you open up, it's got to write all of its configuration files and, and things like that. So anyway, that is actually uh, Debian. This is uh, Mate on. Uh, old metal and so what we'll do is we will continue in our next video with a different distribution Again, the purpose of this is to show you you do not have to get rid of your hardware get rid of your operating system Replace it with Linux. It works just fine uh, And you don't have to go with a specialty kind of distribution either like MX Linux or anything like that There's nothing wrong with those if you want to use them, please by all means use them I'm just saying you're not limited to those Anyway, again, if you like these videos and like to see more, make sure you click like and subscribe. Smash that notification bell. See you next time.